was soothed him, but not liberated. And third year, Sisupal and Dantava. In third year, Krishna came in. And they went to, after they, they went to Narayana. Now they have fulfilled. So came in their challenge and began to serve. In this way, in third, German, they will be married. Here, third, we are here. Prahlad Maharaj, his father and Mother, both were on Cayman. A struggle between father and son began. Father told myself. The Supreme Court, the Supreme Court, nothing. I am so honored. And Sam telling that you are not honored. Krishna is honored. So, struggle came. So, <clears throat> killing Sisupa killing Sisupa he In the meantime, in the meantime, uh, Pralat Maharaj came in this world by them, but not by them. So he was quite so how he killed and what is the Sarit Liga of Ranana today in the history. So, Rasananda can begin from Prahlad Maharaj.
is the not this Om is the Pralhar Maharaj. He is the telling Haritana of the day, thousand year, and then you tell it is Haritana. Now Pralhar Maharaj, now in the state is Om, Om, he is still dead, and it is Haritana. So how this heart the desire, Pralhar Maharaj desire, good desire, is a mercy of Nara. Another way, Vyapa desire. Why is this Hiran, is it Hiranakasipu, hard desire, hard manifestation, bad desire? So, Vishwanath Chakravarti explained, if some devotee become an anger to me, upset to me, then our heart begins with bad desire. Now, already you heard from Prabhupada, where this Chakustan, you know, this is the Brahma's Manasa Buddha, they are Brahmanya. Brahma is the thing upset if he, I give birth to this child to become Krishna Bhakta, but they are Brahma Jnana. So the desire of Narayana, what the distribution is the case, but how, how this child is stuck this way, how they are become Yanti and he get to curse, he go to Devani Klai. So yes, here is the sign. If some devotee becomes angry to you, upset to you, then your heart comes with bad desire. So that is the Hiranda Kasipu. But what is the meaning of Hiranda Kasipu? And Hiranda Kasipu. Hiranda Kasipu is the Hiranda goal. Kasipu is the way. This meaning is the Hiranda Kasipu. If some disciple, any devotee angry to you, then your heart comes with bad desire. This is very real desire. He is from devotee to the Yankee. So his name is the, what is the Hiranya Kasipu? Hiranya means Bola Kasipu is the pain. This heart is very bad desire. He is from devotee to please treat you. Then what will tell me your heart? The Pratha. But what is the meaning of Pratha? Pratha meaning is the Pratishtal in my heart. Meaning, Completely blissful, completely is the happiness. If some devotee become happy to you, pleased to you, then your heart comes good desire and get in the Pratha. Now here, one side is the Pratha Maharaj, now one side is the Devotee. Now they are high. You know, where this Hiranaka Sikh will be very great, especially Brahma, and the Brahma will be pleased to me. Now they will want a benediction. Now he passed and want, I want uh, immortal. But I cannot give you why I am himself not immortal. How I should I get this benediction? He can ask another benediction. Now you are known, he asked so many benediction. I cannot die in a day, in a night, in heaven, in hell, in inside of house, in outside of house, any mom. I can't become any guy. Then Brahma gave every time of benediction. After you know how Hiranaka is going to be and it gives so much troubles, so many, you know, so many details of this world, then all the leaders, they are going to Brahma and pray to Brahma. They are going to Gir Samudra and they are praying to Narayana. How Narayana is told, yes, then I can heal to everybody. This is the poor situation. When somebody gives problem to God, when somebody gets problem with some devotee, and when somebody gives problem with our planet, then I can heal to everybody. Now, this Hrindagasana Sanjita Prathadvara, when he will try to get trouble to Prahlad, then I can help him. Now, Prathadvara is to be burned. He has gone to the Pratha. Already, see, he is the Kittek in Ishtesa and Kramdi in Narvari. Now he is a great girl. So now I am going to ask you to think, when somebody, Bhakti is the coming somebody, all the time of good quality comes to this devotees. Pratha Maharaj, all the time of good quality, this is hard. So I am going to ask you to think, and one day I can get this, he comes to Prahlad Maharaj. So he sent to Prahlad Maharaj this Gurudev. Well, who is this Gurudev? This Gurudev meant to the Sandha and Amal. Sandha meaning who is the Guru. 
Amar Kapiliti the monkey. This meaning is the dance of Pradhar, Sanyana Amar Kap, they are not the care of the teaching of Krishna Bhakti. Only they are trying to be Dharma, Artha, Kaam, Madhya, this is the how you can enter this is the Indubhara Sanyana. This is the some material only teaching. Here they are giving less than if somebody teacher they are don't give to us any Krishna Bhakti. You know, this teacher is like this, like a fool and monkey is here. They are not a teacher. Now, when is Sandhana Amar Vyarthi, otherwise I can go to lesson, that you will learn something. One day, when I can say, he asked to Pradhar, to Pradhar, what is the way to take this to you? Now, I will give my way to Sandhana, my way to Sandhana. What is love from this Nara? Now we get this, no, we get answer. This answer is the Tatsadhu Mani Surabharja Dehina So their attachment is there. They are the love of itself. Which person himself is the suffering this material world, he has tried to get some peace to there. How to receive it? Never. So Pita, if somebody wants peace to and happiness, they are completely free. All the time they have desire to live and call all the time they have this material desire to cut. And they are to pray to love. Krishna, then you become happy. And this Vedya God creates the life like a dark way. Way of a dark. So when you get this thing, now you feel very good. My son is only five years old. How you tell him to bhajan to Krishna? He is my enemy. He becomes very happy. And there is Sandha Manga. I told him, please to my son, what is it you have given? What is it you have teach to my son? But you are not here when you teach to my son, this is the dark of the son. Otherwise, I try to give this good instruction. If you are going to teach this thing, then you are being here with this personal thing and distract in his mind. Now, again he is sent to Prabhupada Maharaj. Now, when Sandha Amar Bhakti already gave peace to the nice thing, then you are perfect. When he again he asked, then he came to the Vlisravanam Kirtanam Vishnu Smaranam Pada Sevanam Arjanam Bandhanam Nasya Sarkha Mahatma Nivedanam Iti Punsarvita Vishnu Bhaktisya This is the this is the good mistakes that we don't do. The smart people, everything happens to Krishna. After smart people, Krishna, then you follow the rules of time and the rules of this party. If one if one listen to something, only to listen to Krishna katha. If one to enter to something, only to Krishna katha. Oh, God. 
Then this down, and we have problem, then the mouse key, there are two problems, there are problem. The meantime is so, when you jump, when, when you jump inside the coil, another branch has been behind you. And it was tilted, and a drop, and some drop of honey is coming down, just passing through his nose, just about to touch. Seeing this, he could not change his feet. Oh, so nice honey. He further, then take this up, take this down, they are cutting the branches and took his tongue. Then he walked to the other oh, so sweet honey, so sweet honey. So he tested. So what is the tiger? What is that? What is honey? What did the Sanchakas are telling? Tiger is personified death. You want or not, you must have to accept the death. Today, tomorrow, none can say that tomorrow is alive. And what is the snake? Snake is broken in this world. Suppose you have a job or any business. You go into the office and they will say, I will meet your boss and we get very disturbed. When you came back, a small kid, dad, have a candy please, and grammy. You forgot completely all the problem what happened. This honey, what this is, is material happiness, momentary happiness. For this, you are doing all this thing, you forgot what to do, what not to do. So here in this, just give up this way. You want to be happy, have to give up this material world and have to do bhajan in Vrindavan, Navati Dham, Jagannath Puri. It's not possible. Physically, we listen to the Prophet, do you do that? And with bhajan, we find also being in Vrindavan. Then we start all this, we are a boy, he sent him back to school. So Prahlad Maharaj, Radhi Guru, for other Gurukuli boys, Sandhya Namarko, Sandhya means Guru, and Amartya means Orga means sun and Om means no. Where there is no sun, means there is no light. Means Krishna is in light, there is no discussion about Krishna, his devotee or his devotee called Amartya. What they can teach him? So they are teaching the Guru Levi's. Oh, listen carefully. Europe is Europe. Europe is Europe. If you have not of Europe, you are a
please give her another chance. And he merely a boy is somehow other is intelligent with the polluted, or naturally speaking, he will be changed. That is the second time the Guru will get back. And when Guru Kul is bloody again, and what happened after that? This Prahlad is telling you, again when you come back, after that, what happened? Yes, the guy is 15. I am taking break here. Hare Krishna.
place a snare upon the body is thus the lotus feet of Vaishnava, free from magic contamination. Person very much inclined to his majestic life cannot be attached to the of the Lord only by becoming Krishna conscious and taking shelter of the lotus feet. In this way, he will be free from material contamination. So, Prahlad was teaching that there is no way one can become free from any no, we do the material life unless you accept the shelter of Krishna. And this is going through accepting the Lord's of the teacher, the spiritual master, as Baba. Baba Baba was saying, when we speak of taking shelter of Vishnu, of the Lord, it means taking shelter of these two forms. The shelter of being known as the spiritual master and the Lord himself, who is the worship of the Lord. So Prahlad is teaching, unless we do this, unless we take shelter, there is no way you can be free. You have to accept this shelter to go beyond the suffering of material existence. Of course, in the Dalai when he heard, he was enraged, and he uh, said that this son has become an enemy of our dynasty. Then he started to uh, the inside now. He decided to kill him and he subjected him to significant all kind of torture. He got the white elephant to uh, crush him, but Pradhan took a wonderful ride on the back of the elephant. The elephant picked him up on his back. Then he tried to sort him with full, full snakes, the snake in army. He threw him in the pot of boiling oil. The oil started to be very cool. When he swam from the cliff, then the Lord came and rescued him. So he had a condition to that was fearless because he was always thinking that my Lord is always protecting me, he's with me, I have not seen the fear. One time in uh, Machu and Rude was thinking, you see you have problems, you have no problems, Pranada have problems. Pranada was uh, confronted with his father, a gigantic demon, but Rude uh, conquered the whole universe and gave him all kinds of trouble, but he always took shelter. He used those problems actually to take even more shelter of the Lord's feet of the Lord. So his father had tried by all means to kill him. And he did not succeed. He ordered poison to be given to him. Poison didn't do it. No, Prada offered the poison, the poison drink, and to him it wasn't harm at all. So the other ship was becoming more and more restless. And finally, he told him, Where did you get the power from? Set off from the same place, and you get your power from the same person who is power to everyone, gets to be to you. Then he said, Where is that person? Oh, he went back, he was sent back to the school, and there, when he went to the school, when the teachers went away and was engaging all his children, all his boys, and then he took his So now we have heard up to this point where Prahlad Maharaj, the saintly son of Hiranyakashipu, was attempted, he was, his father was attempting to kill his very own son. So this is a very astonishing thing that a father will kill his own child. But this is the, the nature of demoniac persons. Demoniac persons, when they see that there is some challenge, some obstacle to their sense gratification, then they want to remove that obstacle, even if it requires murder, and even if it, if it requires killing one's own son. So in the, we just heard in this circumstance how Prahlad Maharaj endured all of these torturous conditions given by his father. And he was simply completely immersed in thinking about Krishna. He did not feel any revengeful mood even toward his father. This is the nature of Prahlad Maharaj. Why are we hearing this kata? 
this Pralad Charitra. Because to hear about the nature and qualities of Bhakta Pralad Maharaj, it gives us the proper conception of what is a pure devotee. So, if we want to become a pure devotee, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur said that you must hear the story of Pralad Maharaj. So many teachings are there, just like we heard how he was teaching Shravanam Kirtan Vishnu Smaranam Padasevanam. What is pure bhakti? What is actual the nine limbs of bhakti? And how he was teaching to his father that unless you smear the dust of the pure Vaishnavas on your body, you cannot understand anything about transcendental knowledge. And unless you give up this attempt to enjoy within this material world, following blind materialistic leaders, you cannot understand what is Krishna consciousness, Krishna bhakti. So in this way, Prahlad Maharaj, he infuriated his father because Prahlad was simply explaining uh, his conception, his understanding of pure devotion to God. But because his father was of the best of the demons, the Asuras, his father became very, very angry and he tried to kill him. We just heard how he tried to put him underneath the elephant's feet, how he tried to throw him from a mountaintop, put him into a pit of snakes, give him poison, and have demons try to pierce him with weapons. Every possible way that he could think of, he tried to kill Prahlad, but Prahlad could not be killed. This was a very astonishing thing to Hiranyakashipu because Hiranyakashipu was so powerful, he had conquered the entire universe. He was actually controlling from the position of Indradev. In Indralok, he was controlling the functions of the universe. So such a great demon who had put him overpowered everyone else, he couldn't even kill his own little five-year-old son. So now Hiranyakashipu, after making this attempt, he became very depressed. Became very well, he lost all hope. So at that time, his counselors, who were also humans, they said, Don't worry, this is just a young boy. He will gradually, as he grows up, he'll forget everything. Don't worry, he won't have any aggression towards you. So we will take him and we will place him back in the Guru Kula, in the school of the Guru, and there he will learn all the things that you want him to learn, and he will become a great ally of yours. So now, Hiranyi uh, Kashyapu agreed, and Prahlad Maharaj was brought back to the school, and again, he was taught by the same two teachers who we just heard about again, Shabda and Amarka. So in this way, his education was going on, and he was in the classroom with all of his demoniac friends. They were all sons of demons as well. And in such a classroom, they were simply hearing all materialistic topics. Nothing about transcendental spiritual life or God or anything. Completely atheistic. So Prahlad Maharaj, of course, was not interested in this kind of knowledge. So one day, uh, the teachers had to go out of the room, and we know in schools in general, when young children see that uh, their teachers have gone out of the room, they now become very happy. And they say, okay, it's time to play now. So all the young boys in, in the classroom, they all started to approach Pralad Maharaj. And they said, oh Pralad, you should play, let's play together. Now our teachers are gone. So, you know, and Pralad Maharaj, because he was a pure devotee, he was very, very attractive. And the children were actually very, uh, they had very good feelings toward Pralad. They, they actually liked him very much. So 
Sohan. First of all, thank you for now, Mr. Sri Gurudev, Sanyasi, Vaishnavas, Vaishnavas. So when Sanda Namarka was satisfied by the cheating behavior of Prahlad Maharaj, who pretended to be an expert student but actually never listened to one word of his materialistic teachers. Instead, he always didn't remember the instructions of Sri Narayani. Therefore, remembering Guru Dev will always save us one from the greatest fears, that is, one lesson to be learned by the instructions of Prahlad Maharaj. So Sanda Namarka, they put Prahlad Maharaj in charge of the, of the children. So when the, child, the teachers left the classroom, the children began to play. Then they said, come on, Prahlad, play. Now it's time to enjoy. Prahlad said, now, I'm, no, now is not the time to enjoy. Now is time to watch out. The children said, oh, Prahlad, when I see you out, and we're in the wheelchair, then we can do watch out. But the young ladies went for enjoyment. Then Prahlad Maharaj said, no. Komara Vachan Pratyo Dharma Bhagavatamiha Durma Manusa Janma Tata Adruma Adhadam Oh boys, this human form of life is very rarely achieved. How rare? The scriptures describe there are 8,400,000 different species of life. Javajana Malakshanam, Stavala Malakshanam Siti, Hrithyo Sankhya Vito 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 Vakshinam Pasa Lakshanam Dhimsa Malakshani Pasa Chatur Malakshani Mahami there are 900,000 types of aquatic species, 2 million types of non-moving entities like mountains, trees, creep, creepers, flowers, pieces of grass, 2 million 100,000 types of insect, bacteria, reptile, bird, and germ, 1 million types of birds, function of dust function, 1 million types of birds, 1 million 100,000 types of four-legged animals, and only the human form is very few in number. After millions and after migrating through all those species, we are very fortunate now to get this human form of life. So Adruva Mahadam, this human form of life is also temporary, like other forms of life. But in this human form of life, one can achieve perfection of complete Christian consciousness. Therefore, Gauravara Ajara Pragya. Therefore, Bhagavad Dharma, the service, the science of serving the Lord should begin from the age of five years old. But Prahlad begin to budge up in old age. And Prahlad Maharaj said, listen, even if one lives a hundred life, a hundred years, but do we know anyone who lives a hundred years? Most people keep the bucket when they are 50 or 60 or 70. Very few people live to a hundred years these days. But even if you live for a hundred years, you lose half by sleep. So if you lose 50 years by sleeping, how much is left? Sometimes 50 years left. And sometimes you lose a bit more. In those 50 years, also, at childhood, you spend your time passing school, running around in Nunavi, 10 years are lost. Then how long? 10, 40 years. Then you have to go to school. Remember, primary, one, two, three, high school, then college, university, another 10 years is completely wasted in that. How many years left? 30 years. Don't forget old age. You cannot digest, you cannot breathe, you cannot see, you cannot hear, you cannot walk, you cannot do anything. Then how do you serve Hare Guru Vaishnav? So the last 20 years, you cannot even digest mashed potatoes. How do you chant the Holy Name? So 20 years are cut. How many years are left in the human form of life? 10 years. In those 10 years, you're going to get married, you're going to do a business, you're going to raise your children, send them to school, and when it's time for budget. Therefore, budget should begin right now. Then the boys were so inquisitive. Oh, Prahlad, how should we do budget? We don't know anything. We never heard from Sunday of Marka. Where did we learn all these instructions? Then we heard on the first night, Gurudev described. Now when he described his life history to Vyasadev. And Vyasadev, Vyasadev developed faith in Sri Narayanashi. We also heard how Prahlad Maharaj told his life history to King Mahukana. So Prahlad Maharaj told his life history and we learned that from Pujapad Rasananda. For 60,000 years when my father was doing austerities, I was in the room of my mother and I heard her play guitar for 60,000 years. So Prahlad Maharaj was born as a perfect Yani Bhakta. 
Only we are here seven days with how much chance we get to hear Hare Kata. How much we advance in seven days? Imagine 60,000 years. So Prahlad said, Bhajan is very easy. How do you begin? Guru Susu Saiva Bhakta Sarva Lamda Pane Nicha. Sangena Saruna Bhakta Nami Iswara Arana Nicha. O Prahlad, one Susu Saiva is Guru Susu Saiva Bhakta. Bhakti begins where? Guru Susu Saiva. It begins from the spiritual master. And what should you do? Sarva Lamda Pane Nicha. You should offer him everything you have. So what do we have? Actually, do we own everything? What have we created? If husband and wife used to come and put you much bigger mind, you used to ask, who is that? My wife, that's my wife. Is it your wife? Did you create her? <laughs> then what is ours actually? Actually, only one thing that we really have. That is our independent desire. So what does the Buddha want? Does he come here to collect real estate or to collect money? In the spiritual world, everything is made of chintami. You should not think Guru has come in this world to collect the few of paper. What does he come to collect from the disciple? That is independence. So Bhaja begins from complete surrender to the desire of spiritual master. And what will Guru Dev do? He will Sangena Sangha Bhaktanam. Guru Dev will train you how to associate with Vaishnavas. What is Vaishnava Sanacha? How we should offer respect to bodies. And then when you know Vaishnava Sanacha and how to respect Vaishnavas, then Iswara Aradhana Nacha. Then you're going to become qualified for worshipping the Lord. So the boys became very much astounded with Pralat Mahima's wonderful instruction. And they all began chanting, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Maybe you need to change your glasses. Hey, I have a 
Sri Ambarish Maharaj. Sri Ambarish Maharaj was the emperor of the entire universe, but he had no uh, desire to exploit it, as we've just seen how Yukashi Kuhn exploited all his opulences, Ambarish Maharaj. He offered everything to the lotus feet of the Lord. Uh, he offered everything he had at the lotus feet of the Lord. And he went to Madhuvan and he was honoring a Kadashi Brahm for one year, glorifying the uh, his Easter day was Radha and Krishna in Vrindavan. And just towards the end of that, at the end of that Vrata, the end of that year, when it was time to, uh, for his Haram to break his fast, the yogi, Garbhasarishi, he came across the Jamuna. And by his mystic power, he knew that Ambarish Maharaj was about to break his fast for one year. So he wanted to test. Gurvasarishi comes in all of the different yugas for very wonderful reasons. In each time, it's to exemplify the purity of the devotee, in fact. Even though it appears somewhat cantankerous and aggressive and so on. But still, Gurvasarishi's motive, as Sri Krishna Chakravani Thakur is explaining, is always to glorify the devotee. At this time, Gurvasarishi Maharaj came across and he uh, went to see Ambarish Maharaj. Ambarish Maharaj immediately invited him to all oh, to take Prashat, you are coming for my guest. Gurvasarishi said, No, just one minute, I just going to say my anik in the Jamuna close by. And after saying my anik, I will come and honor Mahaprasad with you. So then uh, Gurvasarishi went to the Jamuna and he was performing his anik. Gurvasarishi at that time was meditating on the Brahma, so his anik was taking a long time. And the time for Karam came very close. This time of Karam would have stressed many, many times, every apology. That this following of Akashi is so important for our devotion, the mother of devotion, that the breaking of this Akashi is also very important that we break on time to get the correct uh, strength from this Rata. So Amarish Maharaj was very concerned that the time was drawing close and he consulted all these Brahmas around him. Um, can I break or what should I do? How should I break? I don't want to break etiquette. There is social etiquette that if a guest comes to visit you in, in cultural India, you don't take anything before you have honored the desires of your guests. This is the culture of India. This was in ancient India. Ambarish Maharaj was in such a yuga. This was hundreds of thousands of years ago. So Ambarish Maharaj decided himself that he would take break his uh, fast with three drops of Charmamita. And this was breaking and not breaking simultaneously. So he thought that this would be the perfect uh, arrangement to break the fast as well as honor social etiquette. But he chose to honor Bhakti Devi more than social etiquette. Socially, he should not have taken anything, but he wanted to honor Bhakti Devi first, so he took that Charanamrita. And as soon as he taken, the Rasa Rishi immediately understood that he had broken his fast before he had thanked the Rasa. The Rasa became furious. He came into that Sari Hall where Amarish Maharaj was, and he could see with his mystic power that um, Amarish had broken his fast before he had thanked him. He began abusing Amarish Maharaj. What sort of devotee do you think you are? What sort of king do you think you are? What sort of emperor do you think you are? That you're breaking uh, this etiquette in such a gross way that you're taking me before you offend me. Amarish Maharaj was just completely humble. He was just standing off and pronounced. Thinking nothing except the welfare of the Vasarish. The Vasarish became so infuriated that he tore one of his yucky locks out of his head and he smashed it into the ground. From that uh, lock of hair appeared a fiery demon with copper hair and teeth and a trident, all 
blazing with fire. And the Ravastariji directed that demon to go destroy Amarish Maharaj. Amarish Maharaj was thinking, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. If Krishna wants to take my life, that is Krishna's will. If Krishna wants to protect me, that is also his will. He was standing very peaceful and very calm. Only meditating on the lotus feet of the Lord as this fiery demon, huge, terrifying demon, stalked towards him. And the Rishi Maharaj's devotion and Nishta was similar to Prahlad Maharaj's in the sense of his Nishta was so intact and strong and focused on the Lord. At that time, Sudarshan Chakra, which had actually been bestowed upon Amarish Maharaj by the Lord previously as a benediction for his devotion, was standing nearby and could not tolerate this insult, um, insult to his pure devotee. And immediately that Sudarshan Chakra came forward and incinerated that demon to ashes. And then the fiery demon of the Sudarshan Chakra immediately turned towards Guruvastha Rishi. It was Guruvastha Rishi standing there very quietly, offering prayers and pranams uh, in recognition of the Lord's supremacy that whatever would happen would be Krishna's will. No. And Rishi Maharaj, he thought, Guruvastha uh, Rishi thought he was going to get burnt to ashes. So he ran, he fled from that Sudarshan Chakra. And he fled all the way the, the world, he fled in the caves and the oceans, then he ran into the planets, then the higher planets, then he ran to Lord Shiva, he begged Lord Shiva, can you protect me from this Sudasam Chakra? The Su uh, Lord Shiva said, no, no, I, I cannot protect you from this, this is out of my hands. And then, uh, Vastra, he ran to Lord Brahma, he asked Lord Brahma, can you protect me from this Sudasam? Lord Brahma said, no, it is out of my hands, this is from Lord so then, Durvasa, he ran to Lord Narayan. And then Lord Narayan, he said, Aham Bhakta Paradino. This very beautiful verse which is saying that I am controlled by the... I am not independent, Lord Narayan is saying, I am not independent. I am dependent on the love of my devotees completely. The devotee in whose heart um, I am residing, who has no material desires, I am completely controlled by that devotee. At this point, the Rasarishi, he realized the greatness of Ambarish Maharaj. And immediately he began to feel repentant for the um, aggression he shown towards Ambarish Maharaj. And Lord Narayan said, the only way that this Sudasan Chakra can be counteracted is to, for you to go and beg carefully at the feet of Ambarish Maharaj. And only by his potency can that Sudasan Chakra be checked. So immediately Guru Vasarishi came back to Mathura and then he begged at the lotus feet of Ambarish Maharaj. Ambarish Maharaj, meanwhile, he had been standing, fasting, praying for one year, praying that all of his supriti, all of his highest credit be bestowed to check this Sudasan Chakra from incinerating Durvasarishi. This is the heart of the pure devotee. Durvasarishi, in fact, as he was spreading around all the universe, all the inhabitants of the different planets, they were asking, why is this great mystic yogi running from this Sudasan Chakra? What has he done? And they were all realizing and talking about the glories of Amarish Maharaj. So in other words, Durvasarishi, he spread the glories of Amarish Maharaj all over this universe, completely all in the different planetary systems. So this is the trick of Durvasarishi. So we see from this very beautiful class line how Krishna will protect his devotee entirely. The Amarish Maharaj is considered a Shuddha Bhakta and is in fact in the um, progression of Bhakti even more exalted than Sri Prahlad because of his worship of Radha and Krishna in Vrindavan. So this is the very brief form, the charita of Amarish Maharaj.
हरि ओम Thank you. 